I paid the $500 a month to use Devin, the AI coding agent, so you don't have to. Let's compare it to Cursor agents and see if it's worth the $2 billion they valued their company at. The main thing to know about Devin is it's primarily a Slack-based workflow. So it's not an IDE. You tag Devin in Slack and ask Devin to update something, fix something, etc., which includes a remote server, browser, VS Code editing interface, as well as the planner. And you can follow along step by step to see what it did and what it's doing. In my case, I heard about this new image generation model that's supposed to be small enough to run on consumer grade hardware. And I was hoping for a basic web UI, but then I found all of this and realized I don't code in Python. I don't know what to do with this. So I asked Devin. Devin went to work and cloned the repo and got it spun up and generated an image of a cat for me. It even attached the image back to me. I then asked for four more images of a dog riding in a hot air balloon and I got my images in full terrifying quality. Now that's not Devin's fault, of course, that's the model we're using. I saw one of the to-dos on this repo is to create a local real-time interactive app. So I asked Devin if he could do it. Clone this repo and add a web-based UI to type prompts and see images. Devin began spinning things up and sending me updates. One really interesting thing Devin does is it takes notes and it stores them in this notes.txt file to refer back to and use in subsequent prompts. This seems like an interesting technique to summarize information that's important and carry it across subsequent steps. Devin will also sometimes create knowledge entries, which are like bits of information that could be useful to refer back in totally subsequent runs. It'll store these and look them up when needed, which is supposed to emulate the tribal knowledge that exists within a team. I will say that overall, Devin's pretty impressive. It creates plans, it writes code, it finds the bugs in the code, it corrects the code, and even runs its own end-to-end -end tests to verify it works. It'll even respond to your feedback if you find issues and attempt to address them. Anything you reply in Slack, Devin will start working on a reply to. In this case, it was able to verify we're hitting deployment issues. I kept working on debugging it, but unfortunately, after a lot of back and forth, it still never was able to solve it. And eventually I gave up because I was sick of trying. I then asked, can I just pull this code down locally and I'll just run it locally? And it gave me instructions, but they weren't valid because it didn't actually send this code in a pull request. Now that's not to say that Devin can't do a pull request. One of my very first runs of Devin is I had it add a feature to a weather app and it was able to add the feature I wanted, as well as respond to my feedback that I wanted to look more like iOS styling. The final pull request is not bad. It added two packages. The styling does look iOS-like. The code is pretty good, but there's a console log in the code, as well as it forgot to uninstall a package that it no longer needed after my feedback. But we can go in and just leave comments like a normal person, like remove this log, or also pointing out this package is no longer needed. And one cool thing Devin did when we were going back and forth on what the UI of this weather app update should be is without it asked me, it actually generated a deployment with a preview URL. So when I type in a city, I can see that the feature I wanted has an iOS style like I asked. So even though I actually don't have a deploy preview set up on this repo, it deployed a version for me to see anyway. When it learned I want an iOS style for this app, it proposed this to save in the knowledge and I can review and approve it and it'll remember that during subsequent runs. For some reason though, I couldn't get Devin to reply to my feedback, even though I've seen it do it before, I don't know what went wrong this time. I have had a few bugs along the way, but nothing super crazy that I couldn't usually work around. A separate task I asked of Devin was to fix a bug in our existing website. It spun up a PR with a fix, finding this Boolean needed to update from true to false, but then updated some other stuff I didn't expect, like this fallback true, even though git build or static paths already sets fallback to blocking, as well as removing this check, even though we already turned that value to false, and adding a type declaration that I know firsthand isn't needed. The cool part is I asked in the PR, why did you do this? And Devin added the eyes emoji to tell me it sees this, and then it explained itself. I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping it would fix those things, but it did provide a thorough explanation. It just wasn't a good one. Most of this information is not actually true. Fallback true does not enable client-side navigation or enable builder.io's preview system. Fallback blocking, which is already used, is our preference. Also, tabular icons react type definition is just not needed. It's included in the package. It made some weird comment that these components are part of the client-side navigation system, whatever that means. But the nice part is I can talk to Devin like a human, leave a comment, and it can make updates accordingly. Hopefully this time it'll see the comment at least. Maybe my Devin session ended and I need to resume it somehow. I don't know, but it's pretty cool when it works. The last thing I asked Devin to do is implement a backend feature. I said, add to our GraphQL admin API the ability to read and write from the comments collection. And Devin created a PR that was decent. It adds this reflect metadata package that I don't think is needed. We haven't needed it to date. But most importantly, it did recognize we use this resolver structure. It created a comments resolver and added it. This code actually looks pretty typical of how we've written this on the backend. 
Now, it did make up a couple of fields that would have been nice to ask me what the schema is, but otherwise I'd say this is decent code. Now, overall, I'd say the biggest problem I have with Devon is this is just not my preferred workflow. I don't want to make an ask and wait 15 minutes for a pull request and then have this back and forth on the pull request. I much prefer Cursor's workflow where I have all of this right in my local environment in IDE. I can see the updates in real time and I can commit and debug locally without jumping to some remote server and other set of tools I don't know and having all these long waits and delays that are just unfamiliar and unproductive. I get that the idea of Devon is to set some asynchronous agent coworkers off at a task and let them do lots of things in parallel and just come to you with results. But that really isn't a great workflow until Devons are a lot better. I don't want the AI to just go off and do its thing and come back only when it's done. Unless I have high confidence, it's gonna be really, really reliable at that. Otherwise, I'd prefer my IDE just do it. So let's now try cursor agents to fix the client-side routing bug. The big difference between cursor agents and the standard compose view is you don't have to manually add files to the context. Cursor will scan your code base and find the relevant files and add them for you. Cursor was able to find this no client-side routing variable and flip it to false. And if I accept the updates, we can see it did exactly what we wanted, one basic minimal diff. But Cursor's not always perfect. But the part I like most is I'm in control and in the driver's seat. And if I want something different, I could also say, just delete that variable and all references altogether. And I could see the update immediately. There's less waiting and more action. And while I'm more closely in the loop, I have more trust with this process because I know what I want. And if it can scan my code, update multiple files and not make me have to worry about the details, and I can provide real-time feedback and hand modifications and send the pull request my way, that's a much easier to adopt workflow for me and my team. So now if I look at the code, We've now removed that variable entirely, it's totally gone, and I can commit and send a pull request like I always would. Now it's more clear who owns the pull request, it's me. I find this process faster, easier, and nicer. We don't have weird bots creating pull requests and it's unclear who actually owns that and is responsible for making sure the code is good. Nobody has to clone down that bot's PR and push updates to it. And every update happens pretty quickly. I also tried the GraphQL prompt with our very large internal repo in Cursor Agent as well, and I got very similar results. It added the comments resolver, it integrated it into the API, and added the types as well. So pretty similar results on what you'd expect with Cursor's composer view. But again, because the agent mode, I didn't have to specify files, I just typed my prompt and it happened. That was nice. Now let's try a more agentic workflow where we have a clone this image generator model repo. And you'll see the main difference between Cursor agents and Devon is it asks me before it runs any commands. Cursor is generally more cautious than Devon, which is nice because it's running on my local machine, but also sometimes I wish it would just run this stuff for me. I've noticed if it catches an error, it'll automatically try to fix it, which I've seen it be successful at, which is great. Now it's written the code, which I'll accept. It found an error and it's rewriting the command accordingly. Now, unfortunately, my computer froze before I could show you if Cursor was able to finish that task. It looked to me like it was generating the image fine, but it turns out that model is meant for having a real GPU and not burning through my laptop CPU like I was trying to do. Now, overall, I don't think Devon will take off like Cursor. And it's not just because of the $500 a month starting point. Cursor is just so much easier to adopt and I like their incremental approach. Devon, I fear, is trying to jump too far and raise all this money saying they're this all new way to build software with agents. And it just wasn't my preferred workflow. Maybe one day when LLMs are even better and agents are extremely reliable, but I'm not sure the rate of progress will get us there really soon. And I personally believe more in Cursor's incremental approach than Devin's let's change everything approach. My preferred workflow looks more like this. A developer works iteratively with Cursor and other teammates like designers iterate with their tools. Products like Builder.io can convert designs to code and also patch in design updates as they're needed. And ultimately your workflow doesn't change much. You're still coding and debugging locally. You're pushing changes as needed. But I will say that I'm excited to have a new player in the agent coding space to push Cursor even further. And I can't wait to see what comes out from the result of this. But that's my quick take. From everything you saw, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you made it to the end and you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe.